Hello and welcome to another episode of the Why We Travel podcast. Today we will go to Australia, so not only a country but a continent. So a bit of a bigger place there and we want to get it from the first hand from people who live in Australia to give us an overview of what you can do there and what you should see and do. So with me on the show, therefore, I have Lyle McCabe and his wife Leanne, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper with them. They have traveled the world they retired in 2019, you know what happened then, and as soon as they were able, they hit the international skies in 2022 and started to podcast a journal about their travels to share that with friends and family, and the audience grew and people were reaching out for help, so the podcast continued and their love of doing that as well. They have not only traveled the world, they also have a home, as I said, in Queensland in Australia, and that's where they are right now, and I want to welcome to the show right now. Hi, guys. How are you today? Good morning, Klaus. Hi, Klaus. We're great. Thank you. Nice to we see wanna you. We want to talk about Australia. I have been there. I love the country. It's massive. It's huge. Let's start. You're, you're from there. Um, give us an overview of what makes Australia so special for foreigners. Well, I think um, what you're talking about, the size, it's um, 7.6 uh, million square kilometres. It's got a coastline of 34,000 kilometres and its density is 3.4 people uh, per kilometre. So it's big. Um, yeah, you're right. Which means that um, climate wise uh, it goes from basically... Uh, tropical up the north um, to down to Tasmania, which is really, you know, uh, probably close to the South Pole, mm. the second closest country uh, landmass to the South Pole. So why should people come here? I guess that's a good reason because it's so big and it's so vast and, and there's so much, so much to see for, for, for sure. The, the, I guess the, the problem is it's, there's, it is so big. And most people don't have take the time or have the time to to see it all. And they, they you know they they t they probably tend to to think they can you know, we'll just drop into Sydney and then we'll head up to Cairns. And it's 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 not that simple. Um, so yeah, I guess it depends on 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 what your your likes are. You know, like for us, we love wine regions, so there's a lot of those. <laughs> um, and the beach, obviously, you know, whether you want to surf or you um, you want to scuba dive. Um, or if you want to, you know, do hiking, you know, we've got mountain ranges and national parks all over the place as well. Okay. I think a good point that you mentioned, people underestimate the distances there, specifically travelers coming from Europe, where the next country is just around the corner, they might have a problem figuring out how big Australia actually is. Now, what's the usual um, bits and pieces of the country where people start their journey in Australia? What really sticks out? What are the main tourist attractions? Well, I, what I see and, and hear is people generally fly into Sydney uh, and then they, you know, they, as I said earlier, they want to head up to, you know, to Cairns generally or even up to, to Darwin, up, up sort of the Kakadu, the Northern Territory. But it seems that Sydney or Melbourne are the, are the starting points of, of where people um, yeah, fly into for sure. Yeah, Sydney's obviously got the Sydney Harbour and uh, the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And obviously the Opera House. Um, Bondi Beach. And Bondi Beach. So there's, you know, the iconic stuff about Sydney. But Sydney uh, Harbour, probably for Leon and I have discussed it, it is probably the nicest uh, view yeah. of anywhere we've been. In the city anyway. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. But as Leon said, you go up to Cairns and you've got the Great Barrier Reef. You know, now that's 348,000 square kilometres big. Um, and we, we've been there quite a few times and we love to scuba dive. Mm. So that's uh, a great holiday. Then you've got the great dividing range between New South Wales and Victoria. There's ski fields. Mm. So um, we like to ski as well. So there's plenty to do. Yeah. And okay. as you said, we love wine. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to touch on the point of wine. So you have vineyards there. So there's, is there a certain area where people go where you will find the vineyards? Well, if you go back to the Sydney um, example, that's probably why, you know, I brought that up is there's so much to see. If you were just coming to Australia for a short time, you could you could do a lot around that Sydney area. And probably the oldest wine region in Australia is uh, about an hour and a half uh, out of Sydney at the, the Hunter Valley. 
um, and that's a that's a beautiful spot. We we particularly like the, there's one close to us in Queensland, which isn't that well known. Um, it's the Granite Belt Wine Region, and probably we go down to Adelaide a bit. You know, there's quite a few wine areas around Adelaide, which is yeah. that's in South Australia, we, the Barossa Valley, which a lot of people have heard of, and Adelaide Hills and Clare Valley. And one of our particular favourites is over in Western Australia. And that's where Lyle's got family over there. So we get over there a bit. Um, and they make a lot of premium Australian wines, and that's Margaret River. Margaret River. But they've, um, but as far as Barossa Valley, that's very, very influenced by uh, Germany. Uh, they settled there, and they, they were the ones that started the... Brought the, their vineyard, yeah. their, their grapevines. Yeah. So we also, with Tasmania, which is, um, it's only a small state, but for Lena now, uh, for us, it's our favourite region for wine in Australia. It's a very cool climate, mm. and which obviously helps the grapes. And it's also it's a small island, so you've got the the uh, ocean all around it that keeps the uh, the temperatures the right temperatures. And and also over in uh, Western Australia, yeah, you're talking okay. about Margaret River. That's right on the coast as well. That that wine region. So yeah. Mm. Okay. Now, how do I travel within Australia? Is there any preferred kind of transportation that you would say? You would probably, uh, you, depending on how far you wanted to go, you, you definitely, our trains and buses uh, are okay. However, they take such a long time. So I would definitely either hire a car in the local region you're in, uh, or if you're going to several cities, you definitely want to fly domestically uh, around for sure. You know. Um, I think from Sydney, another place people like to get to, which isn't quite so far, is uh, the Gold Coast region. And um, and where we are, we're, we're sort of just north of Brisbane in Queensland on the Sunshine Coast, which is becoming uh, more and more popular. And I think a lot of people have probably heard of Noosa, um, Noosa Heads. It's very, you know, it's a popular beach, beach area. Uh, and that's, you know, very, very close to us here. So there's airports, a lot of domestic airports and easy to fly around Australia that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think okay. if you love if you love beaches, Australia is would be probably should be your number one pick. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I have been to Noosa Beach and I can vouch for that. It's a, it's an awesome <laughs> area and the beaches are great. Now, are there any kind of hidden jewels or treasures from the side of a local that you would um, recommend along the east coast? Yeah. Well, yes, there certainly is. I would. Uh, once again, if you, you're starting that base in, in Sydney, if you hire a car and you, you head north, I think a lot of people have heard of um, Byron Bay. And, you know, that's just one small beach area between Sydney and, and Queensland's border. That northern New South Wales beach areas, you know, there, there's places like Brunswick Heads, uh, Yamba, um, you know, Ocean Shores, Kingscliff, there's... Nambucca. Nambucca, yeah. So there's, yeah, Coffs Harbour Sotel. So it's anywhere along the on the beach north of, say, Newcastle, which is about an hour north of Sydney, anywhere north of that up to the Queensland border is very um, underutilised and, and as beautiful as Byron Bay, if not even nicer. Yeah. And then obviously you just keep on going up north yes. and... Um... Yeah, from, from Noosa, then it just goes up to Airlie Beach, uh, Port Douglas, mm. um, and that's getting more into the tropical areas. Mm. And um, and obviously, you know, Kakadu and, and all yeah, that sort of thing. They're, they're not that on. secret, though. No, they're not. No, they're not that secret. It's <laughs> true, true, true. But, yeah, like it is, it is it's, it's magnificent. Okay. Now, your locals, normally I would ask, how are the locals? You are locals, so the question doesn't really apply here. But... I have experienced Australians as a very laid back, um, very easy to deal with, very open. Yeah. Uh, what would be the expression or what would your recommendation to be for a foreigner come to country, uh, to your country, to Australia, uh, how to approach locals? How What's the best style, put it that way? Yeah, I imagine we come across as, as pretty relaxed and, and laid back. Um, I would, yeah, what, what would they say, say to us? They, you know, they... For me, I'd probably say... Uh, an example of this is how Leanne and I approach it when we were overseas. Yeah. Uh, I'd reverse it. So, and generally, depending what bar we're in and probably how many glasses of wine, we generally just go up and I'll say to Leanne, do you want to make a new friend today? <laughs> and uh, we'll just look around the bar and we just go up and say, hi, we're from Australia. 
Yeah. And I'd say exactly the same. Yeah, I think if people, I was a front because people people would be intrigued. You know, they wouldn't be offended. They'd be you'd 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 have a new friend straight away, and that's what we found. Yes, all over the world. Yeah, I agree with you. I think you know, just just going up and saying, you know, hi, I'm Klaus. I'm a, you know, the oldest digital nomad. <laughs> you know um that, that you'll that you'll ever meet or you know like people we, we are very um isolated here uh, you know obviously our our cities you know are very multicultural but when it when it comes to the regional areas uh we don't see a lot of uh overseas travelers in you know so yeah go go and say hi yeah buy them a drink you've got them okay. for life say g'day <laughs> <laughs> i agree yeah um question in regards of food obviously traveling and food goes very well together and in every country there is something to explore when it comes to the cuisine what are specialities that you would recommend to try out food wise while you're in Australia well you you would have to say fresh seafood you know where we just have such a as Lyle said earlier a huge coastline and so you know we have an abundance of Uh, fresh uh, fish or ocean fish and and obviously prawns and and you know calamari and those sorts of things and you know we we do grow a lot of uh, produce as well so you know any of the tropical fruits in season you know the mangoes and uh, lychees and those sorts of things is is definitely you know what what we'd recommend I think One of the things to do when you come to Australia, which people love to do is, and they see everyone doing, and even the Australians do it, is you go and get uh, what we call takeaway fish and chips. And, um, you know, you go and sit, you know, on a picnic bench somewhere and at the ocean or in a park and and you have fish and chips, you know, which is a pretty nice thing to do. I think probably too in the last probably decade, I've noticed that uh, the... um... The chefs are going more for very much Asian Asian fusion. Yeah. And I particularly love that. And um, and that's, you know, including seafood, pork, you know, whatever. Yeah. All sorts of different styles of meats. And and again, because um it's so plentiful here, you know, your beef and everything is just lamb unbelievable, yeah, beautiful. You know, I love lamb as well. So um Yeah, and yeah, you can't go past the old uh, beachside barbecue too. Yeah, that's true. We do have few, we do that every every time we have family around. We we don't tr- chuck a shrimp on the barbie, but we put a we do put a snag or two on there. <laughs> Sausage. <laughs> Sausage. Yeah. Um, we don't. Yeah, but one of the things people might not know about Australia, Klaus, is it's we've we've got a pretty big breakfast culture. You know, we we love to go out for breakfast, and probably even more so than dinner. Uh, we don't. You know, like in the cities, people go out a lot for dinner, but not so much here, you know. So, but there's nothing, you know, unusual about, you know, meeting someone and for, for breakfast. And and we love, we've got real coffee culture as well. So obviously the smashed avo on toast is a, a big thing here. here. We, we love our smashed avo. Okay. No, it sounds very tasty. <laughs> One question that I have, and I've, a lot of people, you have a very unique animal kingdom there. Everyone knows kangaroos and whatsoever. So where do we need people to go to see Australian animals? Uh, yeah, well, we have a few different places. Obviously, we where we live, we're very close to Australia Zoo. And I think a lot of people um, have heard of, you know, the Australia Zoo because of Steve Irwin, the crocodile guy. Uh, and you can see lots of Australian animals there and you can actually walk through, which I do with one of my, with two of my little grandkids that live up here. There's an enclosure where you, you know, you can actually put your hand out with the feed and they come up and eat out of your hand the little wallabies and kangaroos, which is really, really special. Uh, we have recently been to uh, Tasmania, as we mentioned before, and even though they're not exclusive to Tasmania, there are, you know, my favourite animal are, are the wombats. You know, they're just these great big teddy bear things. And um, I don't know if you saw any when you were here, but, you know, you can go out and do a nighttime tour and, you know, they're wandering around the grass and there's places you can just, there's Maria Island where you can just wander around and they're just, you know, ev- everywhere. But honestly, there's, um, you know, you're driving from one place to another. You're probably likely to see, you know, uh, kangaroos anyway, aren't you? And Oh, yeah, I think, you know, um, yeah, Cradle Mountain, probably in that small area in Tasmania in, in yeah. Tasmania and it was all you really unique you know the echidnas the platypus the uh, wombats yeah but I think the other place to go uh, which is up north is um 
Kakadu. And that's, I mean, there's a lot of crocodiles, but there's a lot of other, um, I suppose, mm. tropical animals. And it's just amazing. But we've been places like um, Agnes Waters, which is, you know, a few hours north of here, and we're just walking from our um, beach place to the, the beach, and there's a little echidna digging a hole, you know, or where I used to live on a, a place a bit further north called Woodgate Beach, which is quite isolated. You know, I'd take my dog for a walk as the sun was rising and there'd be a group of, you know, 40 kangaroos just playing beach. playing in the water. Um, you know, so it's it like the um, the wildlife is is abundant and uh, especially when you're out, out of the cities, for sure. And there is the occasional snake. But we won't go there. <laughs> Well, I can say, I mean, that there's um, this notion worldwide that everything in Australia tries to kill kill you, but I I can watch for it. It's not true. It's not true. It's 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 not true. A little bit on the budget side, uh, how much budget need to people bring to survive in Australia? Not oh, much money. It's not cheap, Australia. Um, it's not cheap for us, but when you have the conversion rate. It's, oh, yeah, I suppose. Um, you know, to book a unit like on the beach, you know, right here um, in, in off season. So if you don't come in the school holidays, you, you know, you probably get something for around the $1,500 Australian um, money. And that's um, for a week in a two bedroom apartment with beautiful ocean views. Um, so, but you know, for us eating food going out is not cheap. You, what, what would you be looking at? A well, we we just got back from Mexico and we we went on a hundred dollars Australian a day. Yes. For each of us, so that's two hundred. I'd say it'd be more like four to five hundred. You know, and that's to go to nice restaurants and Australia that uh, Australian dollars. Yeah, Australian yep. dollars. Yeah. So yeah, but see, the wages here are so good. Mm. Uh, we were told that a lot of the international uh, backpackers come here because their casual wages are so high here that they so they build up so that they can go to other countries mm. and then they come back. And so, but you know that, that all because of that, um, you know, our, our social security system, you know, uh, is fabulous as well. So and our medical system's yeah. all good. But but to come back to you know the how much it is. Obviously, we're not budget travellers and we're not total luxury travellers. So there are people that backpack around Australia very cheaply, as Lyle said. You know, there's lots of seasonal work. There's lots of backpacker hostels and, you know, there's lots of places to to buy food and and cook it yourself. But if you were going to come for a few weeks, stay in in nice accommodation and eat out all the time, Yes, you're probably looking at, at the, the figure that Lyle was talking about. Well, I just thought then, I think probably $500 is too much. I think I found Paris very similar prices to what Australia was, which was about 400 a day. Australian dollars. Australian yeah. a day, whereas, say, London was, dub, uh, yeah. was double that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes, makes perfect sense. Before we come to the end of the episode today, where are your next travel plans taking you? <laughs> We're off there. <laughs> We're excited. Um, and it's only in a ciao, couple of weeks. Ciao, buongiorno. <laughs> Can you guess? Um, yes, we're off. We're off to Italy. Okay, awesome. Uh, great yeah, great country. Yeah, yeah. But so it's we're... just enough, just enough time to to explore the main things in Italy. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> good choice. That, and that's what we do. We're just going to Italy. That's how we like to travel. You know, just just a week in each place. Just walk out the door and say, which way we're we going today and just see what we encounter. That's the best approach. Where can people mm-hmm. find out more, more about you and your travels? They can find us uh, at our, our website, which is uh, www.beachtravelwineallogether.com. And, uh, you know, we've got our, our podcast there as well. But if you are a podcast listener, uh, which obviously they are because they listen to you, Klaus, uh, we can be found at Beach Travel Wine on any of the podcast uh, platforms. And, and we've got a lot of Australian episodes and uh, we're going to be, you know, podcasting as we travel around Italy. And we've done a lot in Spain. Yes, a lot of Spanish episodes as well. Okay, excellent. I will put the links in the show notes and you're just one click away and hopefully a lot of people Thank will you. join you on the podcast. Lyle, Ian, thanks so much for your time. It was really enjoyable to learn more about Australia and I hope a lot of visitors will pack their suitcases and come down under. And come and say good day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>
Makes sense. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Hey, Klaus here. Before you leave, I have a question. Are you a traveler? Do you have a favorite travel destination or favorite travel experiences that you would like to share with the world? Then become a guest on the Why We Travel podcast. Simply message me and I will get you all the details for becoming an interview guest. And then we take it from there. That's it for now. I see you in the next episode and have a great day.